I'm Josh Aronson. I'm a friend of Taylor's. I'm a fan of Taylor's. Um, and I'm very honored to be here and ask her a couple questions about this incredible body of work. Um, Taylor, do you mind just giving us a quick run through um, of the bio? Yeah. You know, who are you? Where were you born? And maybe tell us how you got started in photography. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Taylor Mackay. I was born and raised here in South Florida, if it's not apparent already in all my photos. Um, I've loved where I've grown up. I am blessed to even call this place home because every time I leave, I always want to come back. Um, this heat may be miserable to some people. I find comfort in it. I find comfort in the water and it grounds me. Um, photography has always been a main focus for me as an artist. I've explored every single creative avenue um, there is. I've done clay making, I've done sewing. I've even touched fashion design, but when I pulled up that camera, I loved the idea of being able to immortalize a moment. And my brother was the very first model I ever have, and I remember wanting to put turmeric mixed with yogurt on his face. I just wanted to bring this editorial element to it, because I've always loved editorial photos. I've always loved magazines. So when I kind of got a hold of that, and I saw what I could do with the camera, and I saw I could put, I could freeze a moment in time, because fleeting moments and memories are very important to me. I always try to convey that emotion in my work. So when I saw I had the power to do that with this big black box, I did not want to stop. So that was five years ago. And now here I am as a photographer who mainly specializes in film because there's something about film that just speaks to my soul. I love the tangibility of being able to see my work, to scan it, the process it takes to even load my camera it's very important for me to be there in every process of my work because it gives a piece of me in everything I do. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was that was beautiful as you. you know the um, applause suggests. <laughs> so um, I'm curious to know what the uh, title of your show signifies for you. Can you tell us what the title is and the story behind it. Yeah. So the title of my show is Tababuya Waters. I know if you saw it, it may be a tongue twister because when I searched up the name myself, I was kind of confused. So Tababuya Waters, the first name being the name of that beautiful yellow tree we see here in Florida, which is really bright yellow, sometimes even this pretty lilac color. And it only comes once a year, um, mainly in March, I'd say. And so the name of the show kind of began when I saw these trees just blooming everywhere. Um, I believe this year was just such a beautiful year because trees everywhere was just having these huge super blooms. Like even in California, the Antelope Valley had these beautiful super blooms of poppies. And it kind of makes me feel kind of sad that South Florida doesn't have the climate to have these beautiful trees everywhere until you just kind of pick up on the small detail, which is the Tababuya tree, also known as the trumpet tree. And one thing very important to me about living here is noting the subtle differences in our seasons. If you're from here, you know it's not very easy to notice, but for us, it's our beautiful flowering trees in the spring, it's mango season in the summer. So watching that very subtle change in our foliage was a nod to the subtle moments I want to pick up in my work. So this show kind of pulls into the subtle memories the subtle details we don't notice when it comes to our everyday life, because luxury to me is more than just a material mean. It's us being able to, especially as a black person, it's me being able to hang out with my father, because historically they didn't, you know, we kind of pulled apart. It's me being able to go to the beach and freely enjoy it, because there are places where, and times where we were never even allowed on the beach. So the subtle nod to these fleeting moments that we don't notice are important until they're gone, I wanted to pull that in with the theme around water because we were never really allowed to go into the pools. And a lot of my work and a lot of who I am stems from the beaches and you know, aquatic landscapes. So I feel like Tababuya Waters is such a fitting name for this type of work and the theme here. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, I find that photography is such a vast and really wide um, you know, medium that involves so many things, advertising, yeah. artists like yourself, um, you know, documentary, um, 
you know, landscape photographers, all sorts of things. And so okay. when I hear that so much thought and care and history um, is behind uh, a photographer's work, you know, it gets me thinking. And I'm curious to know when you made these photos, were those ideas on your mind or um, could it be that this was something you came to in the sort of afterthought, having made these photos and then um, taking the time to look at them? That's a really, really great question. And I want to answer that. Um, this, these photos here are a mixture of the two. So in the description, I talk about how some of these are just fleeting moments and some of these are also post fashion portraits. Um, so some of these photos were basically just me messing around, just you know, just kind of hanging out with people, wanted to take a beautiful photo of them. But then there was one moment where I was planning out this show and I noticed how so much of my work revolves around water. It's me seeing how so many of my locations out on my photo shoots tend to always end up on the beach. And then it kind of just rang this bell in me where I saw how I'm grounded at the beach. It's my home, it's where I feel the most comfortable. So. For me to be able to go there it was very important for me to bring it here because, like, like you said, a lot of my work is very personal to who I am. So it was very important for me to bring that element into it. Mm -hmm. So um, when you made these photos, it was purely in a personal um, yeah. work sense, right? You weren't on like assignment or working for a oh, client. Oh no, yeah, this is all personal, honestly. And then one of my favorite photos I've ever taken was in her arms. That was honestly a very big surprise because I was just going expecting one model and she brought her daughter. But then I kind of saw how not only did the daughter find security in her mother, the mother also found security in her daughter. She found this protection that not many people talk about with mothers, how you know their child is a sense of safety to them, to have them near and close to them. So for me to be able to capture a moment like that was an honor, to be honest with you. That's really cool. So um, can you tell us a bit about where this work falls, uh, you know, within the kind of larger, um, you know, view of your practice as an artist and as a photographer? Hmm. Okay, within my practice as a photographer. I guess can I'm curious to know, you know, that, yeah. um, uh, you know, you're a photographer who, um, works in many different avenues, right? right yeah. You photograph for um, you know, fashion clients, for uh, magazine or editorial stories. I do, yeah. And we're lucky to be here with more of your personal work. Okay. Um, and I'm curious to know how you know, those different, working in those different ways um, you know, maybe influences you. Uh, do you like, bring some of those things you learn from the other avenues okay. into this one? Okay, yeah, um, that's a really good question. Um, I would say no, honestly, because my personal work, like I said, it's me. Like, this is a stamp of who I am. I can see a part of me in each and every photo that I take. Um, or when it comes to my editorial work, when it comes to, yeah, when it, definitely my editorial work, I feel like I'm taking on an assignment. So I try to make sure my client gets what they need, definitely, because at the end of the day, that's what they got me for. So I love to adhere to their needs. But when it comes to this body of work, it is definitely who I am. I don't really reach outside of it when it comes to finding inspiration or even when I'm shooting it because I kind of just zero, zero out any type of distractions when it comes to it. I really want to capture the frame that I can see myself doing or I can see like my family doing. I want to be able to see someone close to me or someone dear to me in each and every photo I take because it's just, it's such a long process with the type of photography I do that is very important for me for every moment and every frame I take to mean something. Do you think that um, that influenced the casting for these photos specifically? Are, are you looking for people who uh, maybe resemble family members of yours? Yes, yes. Um, some of these photos definitely has have some type of resemblance between family members and memories of family members. So when I cast my models, I like to look at them like, okay, have I seen you before? In the sense that, ha were you in one of my memories? Were you similar to a face of mine that I may have seen? Because I look at my work as creating a universe in a way. 
I wanted you to be able to look around and be like, okay, like this could exist within this photo as well. It can happen at the same moment. Because each frame, it's one second that I was able to capture and immortalize forever. But then what happened if all those frames were able to come together and you just kind of look towards it. So I like being able to make sure that they're connected in some way and you can imagine them on and interacting with one another. Mm -hmm. So um, when you photograph the subjects in your photos, do you see it as the start of like a continual process? Do you think you'll go back and um, re-photograph or have new sessions with any of the people in these images here? Yes, yes. Um, I like, one thing that's very important to me as a photographer is making sure my models are very comfortable because I pride myself in finding such an emotional and personal state within them and also to be captured. So I tend to always go back because we start to build this relationship with one another, um, with one of them being Tiona. Me and her have grown a friendship that I am very proud and like blessed to have because now when we shoot together, it's definitely me being able to just take a peek into her world, be able to take a look at who she is as opposed to just being someone I casted. So it's great for me to capture that emotion that I like to resemble and like to capture in my work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious to know a bit about, uh, or a lot about actually, the mm -hmm. um, you know aesthetic choices that you're making. Uh, you said that you shoot on film, yeah. right? Um, we know about that, but I'm curious to know a bit more um, why you choose to uh, shoot color versus black and white. Um, and maybe you could even tell us a bit about the printing process, the scanning and printing process. Oh, I love mind. this question. Okay. I love color. It just brings a drop of life into everything you do. I've shot black and white maybe one time. It was a beautiful photo. Don't get me wrong. It was amazing. Maybe even one of my favorites. But something about the color missing just felt like a piece of life was gone. Um, color is just such an important aspect to me because I grew up in a tropical environment. And color is everywhere I go. I see pink houses, I see yellow trees, I see these, these beautiful orange mangoes hanging. Like everywhere I go, color is definitely there staring me directly in my face. It is impossible to just ignore color in your work when you've grown up in such a tropical landscape and that also a city that prides themselves in such fluorescent colors, that being teal and pink. So color is very important for me to be able to tell where I am, be able to tell you who the model is as well, because they're such an integral part of my work, in my opinion. So color just definitely brings that drop of life that I look forward to when you're immortalizing a moment, because black and white, you're always, in my opinion, I'm always yearning to see what was there. It can be a different shade, it could be a different tone of black, but then what if that was a beautiful pink? And then you can kind of resonate, like that's my favorite color, that was their favorite color. So it kind of brings a type of personality to every photo. And then when it comes to the printing process, this was so much fun to do, especially for this show, because I've never really blown my work up to this size before. So I chose this cotton rag print that a printer recommended to me. It's this, it has cotton fibers in it, so the colors tend to have a different, different type of depth. And I also chose matte because I find that glossy print, it, the light that bounces off of it tends to um, remove your attention from the photo, you're just kind of watching the light dance across it. So when I chose the matte cotton rag print, I saw how my work had that depth to it. You were just kind of peering in, like it felt like a little window when I saw it for the very first time, and I knew I made the right choice. It's really interesting. It makes me wonder about time and the role of time in your photographs. Um, I know that you've been working on the show or at least had it on your mind for some time, but I'm curious to know uh, when the earliest photograph in the show was made. Um, maybe you can tell us also when the latest um, photograph was made, and um, yeah, you know why you may have included something from that earliest point, and why you're including stuff um, from more recent points. Okay, yeah. So the most earliest uh, photo I've have in here is in her arms. Uh, my friends know, but that was actually a photo by mistake. I didn't even like it, so I gave away the negatives. And if you're a photographer, you know you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> so when I got that rollback, I was just like, oh, like, 
you know, I don't really care for it. And I've had multiple people like, oh, it's a beautiful photo. I didn't understand why. And then until I just looked at another, you know, you have that photo in your archives and you're just peering through them and filing through. And I'm like, oh, that reminds me of me and my mom, you know? Like, you know, I hug my mom that way. I find security in my mom that way. My mom loves me that way. So when I saw that, it kind of drew my attention to how emotion was very important to me. And that was like kind of the catalyst, I'd say, to me wanting to create emotion in my work. Then I'd say the most recent work here is Tab of Booyah Waters. It was shot at International Inn in Normandy Isle, I believe. This was my most recent piece. So I, canc I, I casted two girls uh, because I wanted to define the meaning of friendship and femininity between two black women. And I also wanted to pull in elements of how I would look like, how my friends would look like when we hang out with one another. And I also wanted to pull in elements of my uh, grandmother and my, my, my grand, so like my grand, great aunts, you know, my grandma, my grandpa, because they have such a stamp on who I am. So I wanted to pull in on the 60s here, so that's why the hotel is more of an Art Deco style. And actually the necklace, one of the models has Astriol, it's actually a necklace from my grandmother. So this was an element that was very important to me because I wanted to mix in the past and the present and not only my casting and not only wanted to find the beauty behind femininity and friendship, but it was also me being able to show that during that time there's also those memories that are so important and dear to us today. Yeah. Um, so that earliest photo, what year, what month, when was that made? That was in December of 2021. Okay. And this was this year in April. Great. Um, were there other photos that you made between you know December of 2021 and April 2023 that didn't make it in the show? And um, I'm curious to know, you know why some of your work um, wouldn't make it in the show versus the ones that did. I feel like the main reason why some of my, my photos I did, that didn't make it into this series that are based around water, I'd say, because the whole theme of the show was for water and water theme um, events. So that's beaches, that's pools. So the things I didn't really, I didn't want to include that didn't have waters because it just didn't really fit with my theme. And then the ones that did have water involved, it wasn't as personal as I wanted it to be. I wanted to highlight portraits. I wanted to highlight the details that are often overlooked. So some of the photos that I have that weren't included, which may be Steven, who is the very first photo that comes in at Hallover. I took multiple photos of him, full body, um, long distance, um, tableau. So it's like a kind of wider range that you can see in the photo. I didn't want to include that because I just found there's too many distractions. I created a memory, yes, there's that warmth, of course, from the sunset that's happening, but it didn't show as much detail to who he is. It didn't show detail to what he may have been thinking. So each and every one of these photos are us just kind of taking a peek into who they are and what they're experiencing at that time. So, um Taylor, you're young, right? Yes, like, I say so. In, in your 20s? <laughs> yes, I am. Mid-20s? Mm -hmm. um, this is your first solo show? Yes, it is. Can you tell us um, what, you know, the significance of, of showing work versus publishing it online versus in a magazine or a book means yeah. to you? And um, do you plan to have more shows in yes. the future? Yes, yes, yes. Um, it is such a blessing to be able to blow up my work in this size because I love my camera. I love what I shoot with and the quality that it outputs. It's such a shame that I, like, I'm most of the time I'm stuck to posting it online. And even then, sometimes it gets compressed and then it loses the quality that truly comes out of that camera. So me having this show was a way for me to actually show the quality that I produce and it's a way to just kind of nod at it because, you know, I did that. Um, and it's just great to see such a tangible form of photography be actually blown up to the size that it can do. Like, you don't know how much power can come from such a small negative. 
and this is just a testament to that. So I really look forward to printing my work out because my biggest inspiration comes from magazines. I've been reading and pouring through them since I, since I, ever since I could read, honestly. So it's very important to me as an artist to be able to touch my work, to look at my work, to feel it, and to see it. Because a screen, you only see it for a few seconds and it's gone. Whereas if you have this piece of work near you, right in front of you, you're able to peer into it. You're able to just acknowledge that you brought it to life and now it's here, right here in your hands. So I definitely look forward to doing this more often. That's great. I look forward to seeing more of your shows. Do you mind if we get into the nitty gritty for a yes, quick second? Yes, let's okay. do that. Uh -huh. I know there's a lot of photographers here and I <laughs> imagine that um, some of you are, are wondering, um, Taylor is speaking very highly of, of her camera and her tools, and so I'm hoping you could give us some specifics. Yeah. You know, what camera do you use? Mm -hmm. What I kind of shoot. lenses, that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. So I shoot on the Mamiya RZ67, and I use a 110 millimeter uh, lens on it. Um, this was the camera I always wanted because. One of the advice I always give to photographers who are just starting or just looking for anything is to find the photos that speak to you the most because you won't know what you want to make until you see it because there's so many avenues photography can take. So when I learned that so many of my favorite photos, my favorite photographers using this camera, I had no choice but to get it. So not, not to say that equipment is essential to everything, but it definitely does help. Great equipment definitely does help to creating that great photo. So the Mamiya is definitely my baby. I almost shoot solely with it. I need to stop come getting so just in love with this camera. Like it's just the way I'm able to just peer into the viewfinder and have such a wide representation of what I'm capturing. It just kind of makes me silence out everything that may be distracting me at the time. And I feel like that's why my work has taken on a new kind of detail. Because prior to this, I was using ma mainly 35 millimeter, which are just the regular DSLRs or a regular digital camera. So you just, you get to click that button so fast and you get that photo and you really don't get to really peer in. But with the um, 6.7, I'm actually able to look at it. I'm able to like really become one with it. I'm able, and there's like a nice black box around it. So all light is it's just, it's just you and that shot. And that has been so important to me as an artist because it's developed my style with wanting to once again find that emotion because I'm able to just like look, tell the model to move this way, see exactly what I'm about to capture. So if you haven't yet or if, you ever, if you're thinking about it, just do it. You won't regret it. Totally. Yeah. Um, I have one more question and I want to open it up to anyone here who might have questions for you too. Okay. Um, so I um, have been lucky to be uh, and, you know, a witness to your process in the yes. last couple months. Um, <laughs> one thing I wasn't a witness to that feels like an amazing surprise that I'm very curious about is the table that's right in front of us. <laughs> yes. Can you tell everybody about the photos on this table and why you chose to include them in your show? Yes. Okay, so I love immersing myself in something. I love the idea of being able to look in, I'm nosy, so I like looking at what people's <laughs> lives are. And I love installation work. I just enjoy when an artist is able to bring a different branch of who they are and just kind of invite you to it. So nothing was more fitting to me than to showcase the people who inspired me the most and who brought me here today. Okay. It's my family. So all these photos are taken from photo albums, they're from boxes, they're from our closets. And I wanted to represent a part of Miami that has brought me up, which is Black Miami, of course. My mom grew up in Liberty City, and she, and I always hear stories about the McDuffie riots and how it kind of just brought the neighborhood down. And I never really understood it until now, and I wanted to showcase how much of the black community here is kind of erased and how much of an inspiration they are to me because it's where I found my voice. So all these photos here are family members from the 80s, the 70s. I even have a photo of my mom when she was seven years old. So it's very important for me to highlight you know, my family members because without them, I wouldn't realize that a luxury is more than just a material means 
that luxury is more than just opulence. It's also us being able to come together. It's also us being able to come home to one another and just be able to have this bond that not many people are able to have. So for me to be able to showcase the people who are so near to me and who have done so much for me, I, it would be a miss for me to talk about this work where I find luxury as being a black person without mentioning them. So, yeah. It's a beautiful connection. Thank um, you. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for um, continuing the um, legacy that we have on the table here with yes. your work on the walls, um, for adding to the Miami story and the Florida artist story. And I'm gonna open up to the audience here. Does anyone have a question for Taylor? And if so, will you come and uh, get the mic? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm kind of shy, so. All right, hi, my name is Julio. Hi. Um, I appreciate you welcoming us to like your space and like also sharing these intimate photos of like the people around you that have also like motivated you to do what you do. Um, because of that, I was kind of curious as to like, do you have any current artists that you respect or look up to that admire, like you know, that align with your passion and like the stuff you want to do? Yeah, um, I have many. There are so many, but um, I would definitely say Renelle Majano. She is a huge inspiration to what I do because I um, I made a playlist and there's called there's a song in there called Stay Fly by Three Six Mafia. And I love how she's able to bring this style to every photo that she takes, no matter how simple it may seem. Mm -hmm. There's just, they look so fly to me, like look so good. And I love how she's able to pull the connection of um, um, just like this regular thing, like being at the beach, just sitting on the doorstep, or there's even a photo of a girl hanging out at the laundromat that she's taken for her project Paluca. But then it looks so stylish. It looks so um, like she styled it. It looks like she's like a piece of the puzzle there. So her use of fashion and then also documenting where she grew up because she's from the Bronx in New York. So she likes to pull in a lot of those um, aspects and a lot of those elements. And she's also um, Dominican. So she also goes to DR a lot and shoots there with a lot of the family members and the people that brought her up. So I like how she's able to pull in two of her main interests into one photo and do it like flawlessly. So she's definitely a favorite. I think that's a solid comparison because I also follow her work a lot and yeah. I saw the same thing earlier when I was looking around. So I think I think that's a good example. Thank you. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Can I give this to anyone, please? Any other questions or no? No? Okay. Hey Taylor, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for sharing these uh, beautiful photos with us. Um, yeah, your explanation has been uh, has been great uh, to Thank get you. like inside your mind and um, to understand the some of the historical significance behind them. You touched on um, some of the significance and like aesthetic choices of the some of the more built environments, so, like uh -huh. the um, the pool photos that you see behind you. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I was wondering if there was any historical or cultural significance of the photos that you took at um, more natural spaces, so some of the beaches. I don't know if there's a specific reason you chose those beach locations. Yeah, so the beach, it's, I've known the beach ever since I could um, walk, honestly. So a lot of my favorite memories come there. There's actually the photo in here where my older brother and I, I was, me and my brother are 13 years apart, so I always felt like I was joining like a cool club. And that's like such a great memory for me to go to haul over with them and just kind of be like that cool little girl hanging out with these big boys and just kind of roughing it up with them. So the photo of Steven actually is that haul over. And it's crazy. I didn't know it was a haul over until I got there. And I'm like, whoa, like that looks just like this photo. And I kind of put them together. So the more natural spaces, I say, is just me going back home. It's me just going back to a place I'm comfortable at, especially when most of the time I'm meeting my models for the first time. So it's great to be able to go back to a place where I'm very familiar with and I can kind of find one place of comfort so I can get uncomfortable in another. So. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> what
what does it take to be a pho- <laughs> in photography? What does it take? Yes. Okay. It takes a lot of things, but not so many. So what it takes to be a photographer, I say, is to be able to notice things people don't notice. It's be able to be able to single out one moment that everyone else is not noticing. So right now, me and you could be talking, but there can be someone looking at an angle where it's so beautiful, but we're not even looking. For you to be able to be that fly on the wall, it's very important for you to have that instinct and also for you to have a camera. So if you have a camera, you need to get one, Aiden. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I wanted to thank you also for like sharing this work. Um, something that I noticed a lot in this, this one is called um, Tabuya Waters specifically, yeah. and then the um, embrace photo. So like uh, you're a great photographer, especially a, for, a portrait photographer, great at highlighting these thank faces. You. When you do hide a face, mm-hmm. let's say, like in the embrace photo or in this one, yeah. does that have a certain significance? Because I love art where it's like from the back perspective, I find it. Yeah. Like gives murky, um, like uh, like what what's going on in there? Right, you know? exactly. Like it hides something. So I'm wondering if that was a uh, a reference in both of these, or if that was just how you wanted to compose it. Yeah. So it was more of a stylistic choice, I'd say, because um, for example, here my model's hair was like beautifully done. I love how my hairstylist was able to create like a wavy, like parting on her hair. And it was just such a great way for me to highlight that without her looking directly at the camera. Because when you look in someone's eyes on a um, photo, it can get very personal, right? So this just kind of gives a break away from that. It's more calming, in my opinion. So I wanted to just create this moment of silence that I also feel. Because I start to compose my photo after, after observing a person. I like to watch them, let them do their thing for a moment, and then I just hit that button. So... This was um, not them not looking directly at the frame, I say, is a way for me to just kind of show you what I see as an artist, what I'm observing, because their face kind of takes the cake, in my opinion, because they're all beautiful. So when you're able to just see them enjoying themselves, you see what I do and what I see as well. I love that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I think that's it. Is that all? That's good. All right. Well, I think that's all the questions for today. I thank you guys for letting me talk about my work because I love doing it. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Stick around. Um, Taylor will be here answering questions and all that good stuff. So enjoy.